story time. After Jehu ruled up in the ancient kingdom of Israel, and put the evil Ahaziah to death, and egged on a couple of men without penises to serve Jezebel up as dog food, the Judean queen mother Athalia threw a hissy fit greater than the crown in the princess bride. God had said that a king would always sit on David's throne. In revenge, for the loss of her rotten shoulder, however, the queen mother established a matriarchy and demanded the execution of all her male heirs. The princess of Judah, whose name translates as God's promise, along with her husband, the high priest of God, whose name translates as knowledge, kidnapped the newborn baby, Prince Joash, and they raised him in secret in God's temple for seven years. Princess, God's promise, understood the ways of God and his will for the nation of Judah. And interestingly, she was the only princess to marry a high priest of God, which is significant given the choices she made in her life. For example, when we commit ourselves to the word of God, we're going to grow in knowledge and wisdom and understanding and be able to make the right decisions when the rubber hits the road in our lives. For seven long years, the kingdom of Judah was ruled under the iron fist of the queen mother Athalia, who most Bible historians agree was the most evil woman in the Bible. We could argue that an unholy trinity was at work here. The demonic god Baal standing in for the devil. The usurping matriarch Athalia representing the Antichrist. And her wizard Matan, who is the high priest of Baal and represents the false prophet. During this time, <laughs> much like in our own day, the house of God was closed for business. Yet it is just like God to manipulate this time of persecution to rise up a new and unexpected king in the shadows, away from the limelight. The Hebrews' uncrowned king, Moses, had been delivered as a baby and was raised up in his arch enemy's house. <laughs> Jesus was born under the reign of King Herod the Not-So-Great, also known as Herod the Egypt Edomite, and his parents had to run away with them into Egypt as refugees. Yet he became Lord of the Universe. <laughs> So be encouraged if you're going through a hard time right now. God will work it together for what you are good. He already is in the shadows. We just haven't seen the fulfillment of it yet. Anyway, after seven long years of hacking men's bits off for man spreading, being white, and earning a dollar to her 70 cents, Atalia had just about ticked off every soy boy cook, bodyguard, and captain that the palace had to offer. The high priest knowledge rounded them up, revealed that Joash, the seven-year-old boy king, was actually alive. And in true Arthurian fashion, they all cried, long live the king. This struck Athalia as odd since she identified as a woman. <laughs> so she strolled on over to the house of the Lord to see what was going on, and lo and behold, she beheld the visage of her not-so-dead grandson. And he handed her a mop and a bucket, and said, Granny, you missed a spot. Athalia tore open her dress, because nothing says, Please don't kill me quite like showing off your bosom. Not that it changed her grandson and his surrogate parents' minds. <laughs> it follows that Athalia was dragged outside to quarrel 
thrown in some horse crap. And pinched in the belly with a sword a couple of times. Matin was killed in front of his demon god altar. And all the shrines to Baal were rendered to nothing more than smithereens. Princess, God's Promise, and High Priest, Knowledge, and seven-year-old King Joash turned Judah back to God in a day. Imagine. So no matter what diagnosis you've received, or how you feel, or how far you've strayed, what thoughts you've entertained, or how crassly unfair even wretchedly, <laughs> you've been treated. Trust that God is, even now, working it all together for your good, that you will see his goodness in the land of the living, and that he will repay you the years that the locusts have stolen. And even more, that he will repay your spiritual enemies in full for ever thinking that they could lay a hand on the Lord's anointed, a child of the Most High God, and the object of Christ's affection. Judah were afflicted by an unholy trinity, but God's power is sovereign. He is over all, he is greater, he's more powerful, and what he did for them, I believe he'll do for you. God bless, and have the best day. Peace.